before I get started on tonight's presentation on the alternate test results, I just want to thank the, the board and our staff for working with our students during this challenging time. Um, I know it's been a lot for everybody, but I think that we're coming out on top. And when and for whom was the DMLM used? So in the spring of 2020, as you all know, there was no standardized test for guns on DLM was not administered. It was administered, however, in the spring of this year. Um, we had DLA, math, and science, and to you note, know, this was only delivered in person. Students had to come into the building to have the DLM administered. The testing window was larger or extended for a longer period of time than it typically does. It was from March 8th until June 11th. Um, typically, it does start in April and end in some way next last year. They extend the time. So, who the DLIM is for? The student must have a significant cognitive disability. The student is primarily being instructed or taught using the DLM essential elements as content standards. The student requires extensive, direct, individualized instruction and substantial support to achieve measurable gains in the brain and in the curriculum. And the student so for DLA, this past year we had testing in 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 11th. For mathematics, again we had 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 11th. For science, we had 5th and 8th grade. Um, typically it is in 11th grade, but for this year we did have a 12th reader um, because they did not test in 2020, so we had them testing. So as you'll see in the slides, there are a few different achievement levels that you can have. Emerging, which is the student demonstrates emerging understanding of and ability to apply content, knowledge, and skills represented by the essential elements. The next step would be approaching target, and that the student's understanding of the ability to apply targeted content, knowledge, and skills represented by the essential elements is approaching the target. Then target and advance are both together. Uh, when we get our information back, as long as they hit target or advance, they'll be in a different uh, area. So you'll see three different levels, not four. Just so you know, I just want you to do this. So for the district in ELA, we had at the top, you'll see the total students taking the assessment. So in third grade, we had five. In fourth grade, we had seven. In fifth grade, we had three students. In sixth grade, we had zero students taking it. In 7th grade, 2, in 8th grade, 4, in 11th grade, 5th, and again, that's that one uh, 12th grade student that I spoke about. So those are all the percentages, as you see across the top. 40% um, in 3rd grade were emerging, 14 in 4th, 33 in 5th, 50 in 7th, 25 in 8th, and then we were close to approaching, so we are getting towards target. Um, in 4th grade, there was 43%. 7th grade 50, 8th grade 50, 11th grade 60, and 12th grade 100% was it approaching. And then advanced or target, 60% of the students in 3rd grade, 43% in 4th, 67th in 5th, 25th, 25 in 8th, and 40 in 11th. So same setup for math, same amount of students that were taking the math assessment those grades. So in third grade, 20% were emerging. In fourth, 14%. In fifth grade, 33%. In seventh grade, 100%. In eighth grade, 75%. In 11th grade, 20%. For approaching, we had 40% in third grade, 25% in eighth grade, and 100% in 12th grade. And then for on target or advanced, 40% in third grade, 86% in fourth grade, 67% in 5th grade, and 8% in 11th grade. For science, we do not test every grade in science. Again, 5th, 8th, and 11th are the typical grades testing for science. In 5th grade, 33% were emerging, and 8th grade, 75% were emerging. 
approaching. There were 67% students in fifth grade and 60% students in 11th, and then 100% of the students in 12th grade. And then at Target, were advanced, 25% of the students in 8th grade and 40% of the students in 11th grade. So due to virtual instruction, even having the efforts of reaching out to the families for the students to come in and take the test in person, uh, take the assessment in person. We did have more students who did not take the DLM assessment due to it being only um, their instruction being just virtual and having not being able to come in. And then finally, the window for this spring will again be yeah, shortened this year. It's going to be from April 1st until May 27th, and then I have the uh, website. Good evening. I will present on our district assessments on our access rails, our advanced placement, PSAT, and SAT. So I'll begin with our uh, access for L's assessment. Uh, we need access for L's is a summary of language arts assessment given to all English language learners in grades K to 12. Access scores provide English language proficiency for the four domains of reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Students are given a composite score for oral language comprehension and literacy, averaging to an overall English language proficiency level. ELP, or English language proficiency levels, range from one to six and correlate to the six language levels developed by the WIDA Consortium. Students exit the ESL program when they reach an ELP composite score of 4.5. Analyzing the scores, access scores provide valuable information about student proficiency and levels of progress toward English language proficiency. Score reports are analyzed by ESL teachers to inform instruction. ESL teachers use the score reports to create individualized language support plans for every English learner in the district. ELP levels correlate to the WIDA can-do descriptors, which inform and make sure that teachers know exactly what students can do based at their individual English language proficiency level. Translated score reports and interpretive guides are shared with families and discussed in conferences and ESL family nights to communicate progress to families. Language acquisition rates, um, basic interpersonal communication skills or social language, typically three to five years, and cognitive academic language proficiency or academic language, five to seven years. Access testing ensures that English learners are making adequate progress in their language acquisition journey. And English language learners um, often acquire both the basic interpersonal communication skills and the cognitive academic language proficiency before these milestones. Um, so this is a snapshot of that distribution going from emerging, entering, to emerging, to developing, all the way up to reaching. You can see in 2021, 35% of our English language learners reached that expanding level. So these are the WIDA levels as a, um, a snapshot, level one um, entering, level two emerging, um, all the way up to level six, which is reaching. The proficiency score level is a whole number followed by a decimal. So for example, a student with a score of 3.7 is at a proficiency level of three and is over halfway towards achieving level four. So a 4.5, once again, indicates eligibility for removal from the program. So this is an example of what that score report would look like going over each of those domains, 3.9, level three, um, almost at that level four, um, and then each of the um, scores going down, including the comprehension and then that overall composite. So a quick snapshot, some of the data is suppressed um, if you have less than uh, 10 students. So we, some of that data is suppressed um, to ensure privacy, but overall, the average composite score, so keeping in mind 4.5 is where you want students to exit. Um, grades K to 5, you can see 17, 18, um, all the way up to 2021. Um, we did not test in um, 1920. There was no state testing, so you will see that gap in certain slides because it's not at a test. Um, but you can see there, grades K to 5, um, they did show steady growth. Grades 6 to 8 um, showed growth. Um, we suppressed the data for one year and grades 9 through 12 uh, 3.4 for 2020-21, and all grades combined at an average of 3.6. And 
and then the percent at or above. So once again, the cut score to exit the ELT program, 4.5. So looking at just rough percentages in grades K to 5, 20% were able to exit based on that 4.5. Grades 6 through 8, um, some of that data suppressed for the uh, most current year. High school, we had 7%, and then all grades gives you a snapshot on the far right. So this is a breakdown of the average composite scores uh, broken down by uh, race. And that goes from 1718 to the darkest purple, which is in 2020, 2021, which was the access from last spring. And then by gender as well, the average composite score based on the access for L's for females on the left, last three years, and the males on the right. Uh, now we'll move into the AP or advanced placement exams. So participation in AP courses is a high priority. Access and opportunity uh, for all students is our goal. Students can be recommended or requested to take AP classes. Um, students from underrepresented subgroups are recruited and encouraged to take AP classes. Not every student that um, is enrolled in the AP course necessarily takes the exam, and that's important to remember as you look at some of the data in context to the total number of exams and the AP test fee is approximately $96 per student. Um, so AP exam scoring um, goes on a scale of one to five, according to the college board. Um, you can see the levels listed there. Any score three or higher is considered to be a passing score. Um, though some colleges um, only accept fours and fives for credit. Um, and more information can be found on the college board database. A one through five is a scaled score converted from a composite score. Um, it's calculated from the total number of raw points based on the correct multiple choice answers in the open response. So overall analysis, um, you can see there some of that data is suppressed due to numbers. Um, so these are the overall, the average AP exam scores by departments. So starting with English, the blue on the far right is 2020-2021, going to math, science, social studies, and then on the bottom is the percent of scoring, students scoring three or a higher, or three or higher is what's considered a passing score on the AP exam. So you can see there um, certain subjects, um, uh, English going over to math, light blue on the far right is the 2020, 2021, and over finally on social studies. So top is the average score by department, and then the average percent scoring three or higher. Um, this is a look at gender um, for all exams, going back from 16-17 um, up to 2021. And then on the bottom, the same on the left, females on the left, males on the right. Uh, the bottom part depicts the percent of students score, scoring three or higher on the exam. Now we'll move into PSAT, uh, the Preliminary Scholastic uh, Assessment Test. It's heavily uh, connected to the SAT. Um, to act as a precursor to the SAT. Um, they are not identical, but the PSAT and SAT have different scale scores, but the PSAT is a possible 15-20. Uh, Here's some information about the scoring of the PSAT. And then we move into an analysis looking at, on the far left, so these bar graphs are a little bit different, so you're looking at 17-18 on the far left, the average, then you look at 18-19, 1920 and our most current data, uh, 2021. So you're looking at ELA is in purple, your math is in the blue, and the overall composite score. So you can see there we had nice growth as we look at 2020, 2021 um, in comparison to the prior years, so, which is positive to see. Um, same thing, looking at the PSAT by race, um, going across uh, 1718. Um, in blue, over to orange in 2021. Um, and you can also see nice steady growth overall um, across the proficiency levels um, when you look at that average composite score across the races. And then the average PSAT composite score by gender, females on the left, males on the right side. And you can also see nice steady growth in terms of performance going back from 1718 to 2020, 2020. And then by program, um, also steady growth, um, including Gen Ed, Special Ed, 504, uh, Gifted, and Free Reduced. So this is 
uh, positive growth to see as we look at 2020, 2021 on the far right. And finally, we'll move into SAT achievement. So SAT is a standardized uh, test used for college admissions in the U.S. produced by the College Board and designed to assess and test college readiness. Um, they focus on skills that matter most for college readiness. Um, they range from 400 to 1600 for the combined sections. Um, one section you'll see in the following slide is EBRW, which is evidence-based reading and writing, and then there's mathematics. Um, the average SAT score in 2020, according to the College Board, was a 1050. And as you can see there, students receive a minimum of 200 and maximum 800 points for each of the two main exams equal to 1600. And you'll only see points for the correctly answered responses. So a summary of our eight uh, SAT summary, um, you can see these bar graphs represent different years. So the purple is ELA, the blue is math, and the uh, over on the right is your composite score. So if you look at um, 2020, 2021, you'll see we had nice growth with a 1,109 average SAT composite score. Um, when you look at the SAT uh, by race, um, you can also see there going across 2021, on the far right, um, and also some uh, increases in certain uh, races across multiple years, 18, 19, 19, 20, and 20. And then by gender, females on the left and males on the right, starting in 2018 in the blue, and then 2020, 2021 on the right. So you can see there we had some nice growth both for our, uh, our males and Um, so the following slide, I'll just give a quick overview of graduation assessments. Um, so class of 2022, um, ELA, they, to graduate, uh, students must demonstrate proficiency on the NJSLA 10, or by meeting the designated cut score on a substitute competency assessment, which are listed there, or by submitting to the district a portfolio. So there's multiple pathways uh, for student ELA, and then the same would apply for math on SLA in Algebra 1, or by meeting a designated score on one of the substitute assessments, or by submitting a portfolio. So those are the graduation requirements for the current class of 2022. And then there have been some changes they've updated for the classes of 2023 to 2025. This was uh, approved in uh, the fall. Um, completing, after completing the New Jersey graduation proficiency assessment, um, which will be administered this year to all grade 11 students. Um, this new assessment, and once again, that is called the New Jersey Graduation Proficiency Assessment for grade 11, English Language Arts, they do meet that. So if they um, did not demonstrate on the graduation proficiency, they also have multiple options. So ELA, you can see there any of those assessments, mathematics, any of those substitute assessments. And these pathways are fully available to students who completed the New Jersey Proficiency Assessment. So it's very important that to be able to use one of the substitute assessments who have to at least may not have passed the graduation proficiency assessment, but you must have sat and taken that assessment. Uh, Start Strong. Start Strong was a new assessment that was given this year. Um, the assessment was given in language arts in grades 4 to 10, uh, mathematics grades 4 to 8, algebra 1, geometry, and algebra 2, and in science grades 6, 9, and 12. It provides schools and districts with an opportunity to assess students' needs at the beginning of the school year and are based on a set of prioritized standards from the prior year. So this is unlike any other assessment. Typically at the end of the year, we take the NJSLA in English Language Arts and Math. It's based on a, a set of achievement to see the mastery of the standards for that grade level. This assessment is different as it was used to determine readiness or preparedness. And they were uh, very careful to call this a preparedness test not an achievement test. And it's used as one of multiple measures within the district, as well as iReady and Lincoln and other multiple measures um, to give teachers data to drive and differentiate their instruction. So the three levels that will be uh, provided, score reports will be forthcoming. Um, strong support may be needed, some support may be needed, or less support may be needed. So the levels are not as differentiated as a typical NJSLA assessment, which you have five levels for the Start Strong. Um, this will be the information provided to the teachers as well as the parents on those individual school reports. Um, so strong support um, and uh, some support may be needed to give teachers an indicator of which students need additional supports and resources to ensure 
short mastery of the grade level standards. The results should be available to the public in late fall. Um, and just like any other assessment, we have 60 days to report out from the time the score reports are available in digital format. So we'll have another presentation uh, probably in December that will cover the results of the start strong assessment. And then interventions um, and supports. We have a multi-tiered system of supports. Um, and you've heard a lot about um, some of these bullet points tonight from Mr. Wells, the middle school, equity team, social emotional learning. Um, obviously, these are important uh, components before the academics. We have to make sure that our students' social emotional needs are being met. Um, full school Title I status for Lloyd and Clifford, Title I ESL family nights, before and after school academic tutorials. We had a comprehensive summer um, academic enrichment program, academic assistance, including National Honor Society and peer tutoring at the high school level. We have data analysis PD committees and principal data meetings, which give us an opportunity to really dig into the results and create action. And then um, additional intervention and supports, standards-based online programs, IXL, Learning Ally, Uzella, Learning Agency, Everyday Math Online, just to name a few. The IREG Diagnostic and Personalized Learning Pathways available to every student in grade K-5. Um, it's a valuable tool that every student has access to 24-7, and the teachers have access to that data on a regular basis to drive their classroom instruction. Um, so our goal is that students are hitting that 40 to 45 minutes per week of iReady on their personalized pathway to really see the proficiency levels and the growth um, that we would like to see depending on the grade level. Linked benchmarks in grades 6 through 12, and then PD and tiered supports. Um, and this summer, um, and through a lot of our grant funds, we were able to provide specialized PD to Linda Rubell, which focuses on reading comprehension, or to Gillingham, which is fine to make awareness, Wilson Reading Strategies, Seeing Stars, and Math Intervention, and then our Shelter English Instruction for Science Training that we were able to offer each year. Thank you very much for your time. Ms. Stockwood, just one um, question. So I saw the ELL, uh, we were pretty consistent year to year. PSAT and SAT, it seems like we're showing growth, which is really good. Um, I had a question on the advanced placement. Um, if I'm understanding the charts correctly, there was some dips, right, in, in this, this in 2021, specifically in the And I was just wondering, is there something we're going to do to help increase that or just forward? I'm not sure it's a year with when they yeah. took that year forward, but yeah, our goal is to be a composed practice that um, if any student really has a desire to take that advanced placement, we encourage them to take that course, apply, speak with their counselor, um, and then counselors and teachers are also looking at level of multiple measures. So if the students aren't um, doing that outreach to get them to at least try to take the course, you do not have to take the exam. Some students don't come from the list, so they take that
Um, so for the board's president, president's report, I'll try to keep it fairly brief. Um, I want to thank Mr. Wells and all the students for coming out tonight. Um, it was great seeing the kids present, participate. I loved hearing the band and chorus, hearing from all the students. Um, so that was wonderful. One of the best parts of getting to travel now for the RAM meetings is we get to see the children do what they love. So that's fantastic. Um, just to reiterate, we have a lot of fun activities planned this week at the various schools. We've got spirit and theme weeks. Um, costume contest parades. This Friday night is homecoming game, and we want to invite everybody to come out and support the Huskies as we compete against Tom's River East. Um, you can cheer on the football team, cheer team, dance team, marching band, and color guard. They've all been working so hard and would love to feel your support that night. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Um, also, if you'd like to participate in the upcoming strategic planning meeting, as we've said, there's information on the district website for the November meeting as well as the January um, meeting. It's a, it's a weekend meeting in January. Um, thank you to everyone who provided feedback on the community survey as it relates to the American Rescue Plan grant. It'll help us prioritize um, how the district um, determines what the needs are and how we allocate resources. Um, the district also we wanted to mention, which you've probably seen some emails, we are hiring. Um, we're actively looking for to hire bus drivers. Um, if you're interested, please contact the transportation department. Um, we want to thank you for your patience when it comes to transportation. Apologize for any delays. Um, similar to a lot of other districts across the state, we've got a bus driver shortage. Um, sorry, and when drivers call out. Some drivers need to do the double shifts. Um, we're also in need of custodians. Aramark has a virtual hiring event tomorrow. Um, information's on the school website. And two other quick things. Um, Thanksgiving food distribution information is also available on the website. Um, some of it does require early registration. And lastly, Madawan has their trunk or treat this Sunday at Borough Hall. One of our buses will actually be there. It's going to be the trick or treat bus. So lots of fun activities. Um, and then there's a concert at night. So we wish everyone a happy and safe Halloween. And with that, C and I, uh, Mr. Bobby. Thank you. Beginning with Part A, travel. We have five staff members attending the Regional Professional Development Academy. Topics include motivating um, students, working smarter, not harder, managing anxiety in the school and in the classroom, and plugging the gap to improve word recognition skills for struggling readers. And that is at no cost of the district due to our district membership to the Regional PD Academy. We have seven teachers attending the Jersey Shore Consortium for the Gifted and Talented, which is providing professional development, and that's at no cost of the district. One staff member attending the NJPSA Understanding the Power and Responsibilities of the School Climate Team Workshop, Three middle school staff members attending the NJPSA Evolving Legal Standards for LGBTQ Plus Students. Two staff members attending the NJPSA Special Education Director's Toolkit Workshop. Two staff members attending the Enhancing Your Social Studies Instruction Practical Strategies Workshop. And two staff members attending the NJSBO Academy Purchasing Basics Workshop. Moving on to Part B, a curriculum instruction. There have been no additions since the Committee of the Whole. And that is all for curriculum instruction. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? I'll motion. I'll second. Any questions from the board? Okay, student services, Ms. Perez. Good evening, everyone. Under student services, under item number one, we're asking for board approval for the following students to attend an added district placement for the 21-22 school year. The tuition cost is listed along with the effective dates. Under item number two, we're asking for board approval for bedside instruction for the following students listed with their costs and again their effective dates as listed. Under item number three, we're asking for board approval to approve the following middle school CBI curriculum based instruction trips for the 21-22 school year. They include ShopRite, Stop and Shop, Menlo Park Mall, and Lifetown and the effective dates are listed. The uh, community-based instruction facilitates the instruction of mastery skills in the natural environment. Students will be able to generalize classroom learning, concepts, and skills across different environments to build student independence and to ensure transfer skills. Under item number four, we're asking for board approval 
for extraordinary services at their current placement per student's IEP for the following students listed on page two of three. The cost is listed along with the effective dates. Under item number five, we're asking for board approval for the, with the, for the agreement with the following provider for the 21-22 school year on an as-needed basis for students who attend Keys Academy. The cost is listed, and please note that this is, um, this is provided through the grant for Keys. Under item number six, we're asking for board approval for the submission of the five-year preschool operation plan. Um, we did submit a plan back in February of 2021 when we opened preschool. Um, we're required to submit an updated five-year preschool operation plan that will include the 22-22-23 school year and years to come. Under item number seven, we're asking for board approval for the first amendment to the Memorandum of Agreement between Keys Academy and Brookdale Community College. The parties agree that the First Amendment modifies the terms of the MOA per, per paragraph seven, entitled term of MOA, which became effective on August 1st, 2017, and expired on July 31st, 2020. Due to COVID, um, they acknowledge and agree to extend the term effective date August 1st, 2020 to July 31st, 2024. The renewal did not happen prior due to COVID and there was um, closure at Brookdale during COVID. Under item number eight, we're asking for board approval for the wellness program through Give a Kid a Dream, a New Jersey nonprofit profit corporation to provide conditioning, strength, and boxing for students enrolled in the Keys Academy Please note that this, again, is at no cost to the district, and it was a grant funded through its Investors Foundation. That concludes student services. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? All motion. <coughs> All second. <coughs> Any questions from the board? Okay. Um, personnel, Mr. Levin. Thank you. Good evening. We ask the board to approve the following. Under section A, reservations for retirements, two staff members listed for retirement, one staff member with resignation, the fact that dates is listed. Under section B, leave of absence for 21-22 school year, items in red are on page two of six, staff members that are listed in red with their types of rooms and effective dates. Under section C, appointments, number one, new hires, one staff member listed for approval for secretary of special services as a 12-month position. Item number two, extracurricular activities. This begins on the bottom of page two of six. One name listed under athletic activities on the bottom of page two. Continue with athletic activities on top of page three of six. Non-athletic activities and hourly activities is listed with costs. Item number three, curriculum instruction with the title grants at the bottom of page three of six. Posting and recommendation at the bottom of page three and continues on the top of page four of six. Continue on page four, item four, CMI Elementary School data analysis for the 21-22 school year. This is for uh, Rufin Drive and Strathmore. That means we're listed with costs. No additions to number five and six. So continuing on page five of six. Item number seven, home instruction for the 21-22 school year. Two students listed with the hours and effective dates. Item number eight, additional summer recommendations for the 21-22 school year, names and hours were listed. Item number nine, volunteers for the 21-22 school year, two names are listed, one for high school, one for Strathmore. We've got to page six, nothing new for items 10 or 11. In red, item 12, substitutes for the 21-22 school year. Names are listed with their locations and account numbers, and this is for instructional systems, district instructional systems, who hold their credentials for a substitute teaching certificate, and they fill the role of substitute teacher in the district. Item D, other, number one is the HIP report from the previous board meeting, and no additional changes to item two. That concludes personnel. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? So moved. I'll second. Any questions from the board? Okay, um, policy, Mr. Liebman. The policy agenda, we recommend the board to approve a second reading adoption of the following policies. Policy 2415.05, 
policy regulation 2413.20, policy 2431, policy 2431.3, policy 2425, policy 2451, policy 2464, policy 2622, policy 6511, and that's for second reading and adoption. That concludes policy. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? I'll second. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, finance, Ms. Case. Good evening, we'll be looking to take action on the following items. Payroll for September, as well as the bills list for October. Transfer of funds for August. Board of Education certification for a major fund status for August. Adoption of the 22-23 budget calendar. Four, five, and six will be the annual memorandum of agreement between both police departments. On the top of page two will be routine travel for the person to bring it in the chart. It will be a coin drive that we're being held. We're going to go ahead and donate to the National Diabetes Foundation. Nine will be the approval of the district routes for the 21-22 school year. Ten will be awarding the transportation out of district routes for the 21-22 school year. Eleven will be the award of joint transportation routes for this school year. At the top of page four, it continues on. At the top of page five, it continues on. Twelve is awarding the transportation route renewal for the 21-22 school year. And on the last page, we have bus drills and evacuation drills for the month of October and September. And that concludes that. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? So moved. I'll second. Any questions from the board? Okay, that brings us to public comments relating to... Public comments relating to agenda items and additional matters. The Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on matters of interest to the school community. Individuals wishing to speak must state their name and address. Comments are limited to three minutes duration, but an individual may speak a second time after all others who wish to speak on the topic have been heard. All statements should be directed to the board president and no participant may address or question board members individually. All speakers are requested to express themselves in a civil manner with due respect for the dignity and privacy of others whose legal rights may be affected. Please note, while it is not the board's intention to stifle comment on matters of legitimate concern, the public should be aware that if their statements violate the rights of others under the law of defamation or invasion of privacy, they may face personal liability to the injured party. If speakers are uncertain of the legal ramifications of their comments, the board urges them to seek guidance beforehand from their own legal advisor.
a lot for construction that we're constantly referring back to the pilot program, which is payment in lieu of taxes, which doesn't directly go to our school. Um, our schools are really overcrowded as it is. Um, and I'm just curious as to what the interactions we're having as the Board of Ed with the town councils, explaining how, like, that's great for the town that we're going to give them all this extra money, but it's not going to help our schools. And our schools are crowded. They're crowded. They don't even have time to eat lunch. There's busing problems. We all know that. The classes are a little bit tighter. We're seeing here and here how we don't have room actually to like, eat lunch and people are spreading out. So I'm just curious as to what the board's feelings are on that and what, what do you guys, like how are we going to solve that problem? Because if we have upwards from, let's say, another 150 or 200 apartments going up, whether it happens or not, but it's in the plans to happen, um, how are we going to deal with the fact that there's going to be an in influx of kids? We have 300 kids this year coming in. Um, how are we going to deal with that? Um, and it's really nice to say it's going to be all computers and young couples, but, you know, we all, for those of us who live, we all live here, we love it here, you know, I was born and raised in the G-section and I never left, you know. Um, there's a reason for that, and people are starting to realize that outside of, from outside of town and outside of state, that this is like, I always say it's one of the best places to live because we're kind of like right in the middle of everything. We have the bay, we have the ocean, it's like a little secret, but it's not such a secret anymore. <laughs> and we're coming really overcrowded, so I'm just concerned and curious as to how the board feels about that and what maybe we can do to possibly work with the towns so that we're not just giving away 30 years worth of property taxes for the schools. So I can tell you, um, not necessarily from a board perspective because I'm not on the board, um, but we've started, um, Ms. Case and I have started meeting uh, every month with both town administrators uh, and every other month with both of them at the same time. Um, we're, just, we're openly discussing these issues. As you know, um, we're, gonna, we're going to make Cambridge Park a complete pre-K, so we're pulling out central office, the, the transportation department and maintenance out of Cambridge. Um, so um, we're actively planning, however, you know, to your point, the building that's going up, um, you know, is something that we are discussing. However, um, you know, to your point being that there's more coming. So we're, we're in the middle of a uh, long range facilities plan that we just started to look into these issues over the next five years. And also, I think with this, the strategic um, plan that's gonna be coming out that we're gonna be starting in January, I think that's another opportunity for community members to talk about exactly what you're talking about, Spur, because um, it is something that's not going anywhere. And I agree with you, I love it here too, and, and I think, like you said, um, people are starting to see that as well. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to work night and day to, make, to ensure that we can carry on. However, there are outside things that are not within our control. The one thing I want to say too is I don't know that all of the new students are coming in. So we know it's about roughly a little over 300 new students. We're trying to, um, you know, determine exactly how many students across the, the various schools in the district, so we can come back and tell you at potentially maybe the next meeting um, exactly how many within each school, so people understand where they fall, which schools specifically that we're having um, the higher numbers come in. But I also don't know that it's fully related to just all the building going on in town. I also think that what happened, especially with COVID, is um, a lot of um, older people within the various developments. I know within my development alone, so many older families moved out, and very young families. Never seen so many young families just within my own development. So I think that also increased, but I think we need to do a deeper dive into specifically where the kids are coming from so that we can better tell you how much it affects um, and the long-range facility planning, I think, will help us with that as well. Can I, um, I follow up with just a question? Sure. So then, I guess my follow-up is this. I know at the last meeting we discussed that we're not going to be doing any type of like district-funded homeschool program, but is that possibly something that we could really start to look into to say, like, well, you know, we are going to get crowded. Can we possibly create that? Because there are a lot of parents, a lot of families in town that do homeschool their kids, I mean, not a ton, but I think that if we had like a, a program that was possibly like run or funded by or like supported by the Board of Ed, 
possibly more people might do that. I'm not saying people should be in school, but there are a lot of people who the mind of like the regular school day just doesn't work for the kids, it doesn't work for them. So but it's hard to do, like especially in New Jersey, it's really hard to do a home school program unless you really know what I think. Because I looked into it for sure. Um, to do it if you're not like an educator, but there's all so many good programs that a lot of states do use. So I don't know, I'm just trying to think like outside the box that possibly this is something that we could just really look into. I, I certainly will. Um, I was unfortunately unable to attend the last meeting, so um, um, I will I will start looking into that when I wake up in the morning. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mrs. Coley, can I just um, make a comment? Um, oh, oh, no, not, oh, not necessarily, but feel free to me to like No, I just want to say that I always said from day one when I, when I came on the board that I wish that the town and the schools were like the units and worked closer because, I, you know, a lot of times we don't know what the left is doing and what the right is doing. So that's important. So I'm glad that we have these meetings happening with the town because we really need them as much as they need us, vice versa. So I'm glad that there's a relationship there. Um, so I appreciate you guys doing that. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be next, sir. Oh, yeah. I'll be like 30 seconds. Okay, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Or anyone? My name is Matt Hughes. I was on the board agenda for to be the head wrestling coach here. So I just want to say thank you for hopefully approving me. And uh, I really am excited to start, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Yes. Dr. Delaney? Yes. 
Ms. Martinez? Yes. Mr. Martinez? Yes. Ms. Perform? Um, yes, but I'll just take you to the items that are related to the locations of the transportation. Mr. Ms. Osborne? Yes. Mrs. Cohen? Yes. Any unpaid business? No. Any new business? I just want to say thank you to all the students who participated in each cleanup on Saturday. Um, I know um, Principal Eiler had posted uh, some of the students who sent pictures to him about the beach cleanup. This is something that the Environmental Board does uh, twice a year, once in um, with the Clean Ocean Act, of course. Um, but we also do it in April, so it's good to have the students come out, um, old and uh, young students, as well as the community to come out and clean up our beaches. We do have Cocoa Beach, which some students don't even know that we do have a beach, so it's nice to have the clean up, to have them come out and uh, clean up the beaches. And also, we do have students in the high school that uh, organize their own beach cleanups, so I just want to say thank you to the students for their community service. Thank you. Also, um, with new business, Madawan has their town cleanup um, this Saturday, I believe it's 8 to 10 a.m. as well. Anything else? Um, be it resolved that a closed session be convened for the purposes of discussing privacy, personnel, and legal matters. The subject matter of these discussions will be disclosed to the public when the reason for confidentiality subsides. Although the board cannot guarantee it, the length of the executive session is estimated to be 30 minutes, after which the public meeting of the board shall reconvene and proceed with business. Action will not take place. Can I get a motion and a second to enter exec session? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.